What's good, y'all? It's Bro Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 20 funny times WWE wrestlers broke the fourth wall. Now, the wrestlers are not supposed to be breaking the fourth wall, just like in a lot of media. You know, certain things are not supposed to be, you know, the fourth wall is not supposed to be broken. But sometimes it does happen. It depends on the wrestler, it depends on the character, and uh it can a lot of times it's actually pretty funny. So we're gonna check out some of these moments where wrestlers are, you know, decide to break the fourth wall and uh um should be a good one man this will be this video brought to you by tap out corner once again subscribe to him if you haven't already let's check this out man whenever a wrestler is doing an interview backstage there's one thing you'll never see and that's the interviewer's feet there's a good explanation and i'll let triple h show you why the big question is why don't you wear shoes when you do these <laughs> I don't have an answer for that <laughs> john cena breaks the fourth wall like nobody that's funny bro why would they <laughs> why would they break the fourth wall on that it's probably to make the like the announcers uh shorter or the uh, the uh not announcers but the uh, the person's doing the interview shorter because normally they're probably wearing heels so you probably want to make them shorter than whoever they're interviewing but he else, as you will see throughout this video, when the leader of the C Nation returned in 2023, he got a visit from Austin Theory. Cena roasted the United States champion oh, so yeah. hard that he broke the fourth wall. You know what? I'm not going anywhere just like that bald spot on your head ain't going anywhere. I would so much rather be bald than have them pipe in fake crowd noise for my matches because nobody cares. That was, oof, once he said that, I was like, yeah, bro. He, yeah, he's, yeah, man, he's already cooked. John, stop it. Just now you're overcooking him. In case you're wondering, yes, WWE actually does play crowd sound effects during matches. Yeah. One thing that every wrestling fan knows is that in WWE, there are cameras everywhere. Uh -huh. Sometimes there's a logical explanation for why a camera catches a backstage instant, like when a wrestler is getting interviewed. However, most of the time, wrestlers and fans are supposed to pretend like there isn't a camera following the wrestlers around. Uh -huh. However, during Dean Ambrose's phase as an interviewer, he made a funny joke about this weird part of WWE. This one's scheduled. No one told me about this. Well, there's cameras in here. It'd be kind of weird if there were cameras in the locker room if we didn't have an interview. Yeah, it would be weird <laughs> if there were cameras in the locker room. On yeah. SmackDown in 2022, a six-pack challenge was set up with the winner facing the SmackDown Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey, at Money in the Bank. Aaliyah was one of the participants, but she didn't come out when her music played. As it turned out, Shotzi had locked Aaliyah in the locker room as well as someone else. Shotzi locks Aaliyah and a camera operator in the women's... Man, we miss you, Pat McAfee, man. <laughs> I miss you on commentary. That's funny, bro. <laughs> the camera guy got locked in, too. He didn't do nothing. <laughs> they could have shot that differently where the camera guy is outside the room and you have people running in trying to break open the door or something. I don't know. <laughs> Locker room. This is she's unbelievable. The biggest unanswered question in WWE history is who threw the pie at Kevin Owens? <laughs> WWE later did an interview with KO, and while Owens didn't have an answer, he still managed to break the fourth wall. WWE had this amazing technology on Monday night where you guys could actually see through my eyes what was happening, so everybody knows that when I turned, all I saw was a pie coming at me. This is why I love Kevin. <laughs> he said WWE has this amazing technology where you can see through my <laughs> Bro, that did look so hokey, bro. You didn't even have to do that. You could have just had a shot of someone throwing a pie at him off camera. But instead, you switch to him looking at a pie coming to him. <laughs> so stupid. Don't you remember that? When you saw through my eyes? On the final Raw of 2010, Cena kicked <laughs> off the show. This is nothing new, and John Cena actually pointed this out. Yeah, you guys ever notice that every time somebody comes down that ramp for Monday Night Raw, they just get a microphone and talk about what happened last week? You know what? Tonight, I am going to do the exact same thing. I'm a little <laughs> bit upset about what happened last week. Oh, come on, Cena. I think that's only happened on every single episode of raw ever. yeah 
Here's one thing that doesn't make any sense. When a champion issues an open challenge, why does only one wrestler answer? It's a free championship match, so yeah. would every wrestler want to accept it? Well, in 2023, we finally saw what goes on backstage when an open challenge is issued. On NXT, <laughs> the North American champion, Wes Lee, had issued an open challenge. The cameras went backstage to reveal a ton of wrestlers all scrambling to try and be the first person in the ring. So that's what was really going on when John Cena yeah, had- Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. They just fight in the back. No, I won the a title opportunity. No, I want the title opportunity. <laughs> this weekly open challenge in 2015. Oh Back my in God. my day, SmackDown was on a Tuesday. Yes, before the Blue Show aired live on Friday nights, SmackDown used to be filmed on Tuesdays and would air a few days later. Mm -hmm. For example, when Dean Ambrose kicked off the June 11th, 2015 episode of SmackDown, it was broadcast on a Thursday. However, it was all filmed on Tuesday. Ambrose had Seth Rollins' WWE World Heavyweight Championship, but Rollins came out to reclaim his title. Dean then revealed it was a replica he bought at the merch table and then said this. Truth be told, I don't remember exactly where I left the real championship. The last few days have been a bit of a blur and they all rolled into one. And I mean, it still feels like it's Tuesday to me today. I guess it felt like a Tuesday because- <laughs> It well, was. It was. <laughs> it's always cool when from out of nowhere, a wrestler's theme song starts playing and they run into the ring to make a big save. However, it was never explained how the WWE production crew is able to hit the music right before the wrestler runs out. Yeah. Well, in 2016, we finally found out how they do it. Seth Rollins is looking for his SummerSlam opponent Finn Balor. The Raw General Manager, Mick Foley, suggested Seth try calling out Finn from the ring. Seth agreed and headed out to the arena. Someone had to tell the production crew to play Seth's music, and this happened. Hey, uh, this is Raw General Manager, Mick Foley. Will you hit Seth Rollins' music, please? Really? It's not uncommon for a manager or someone else to get banned from ringside as uh -huh. part of a WWE storyline. However, the person who gets banned always seems to still show up yeah. and interfere in the match. Well, finally, SmackDown General Manager Daniel Bryan decided to address this. I don't know why this happened. Okay. Every time we ban somebody from ringside or we ban somebody from the arena, they always show up. Yeah. Can we not afford good security? There needs yes. to be We are a billion steps. dollar company. Yes. For example, a fan who doesn't have a ticket yeah. can't get in. But look, I mean, when your face is kind of your, your security badge to get into the building, even when you're James Ellsworth, you're going to get in. Maybe all the security is just not being alerted to this. I don't know. I think we do a fairly good job of alerting people. Either that or we need better alerters. We need better <laughs> alerters and we need better security. More alerters. We've More got to get alerters. on this. Uh, but either way. If you way, see something, say something. Here's how you win the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Don't get eliminated and try to eliminate as many other competitors as possible. It would make sense then, if you see one wrestler trying to eliminate another, that you should work together and get that person eliminated to better your odds of winning. Yeah. Despite this, in every single Rumble match, wrestlers will save someone from being eliminated by attacking yeah. the person who is doing the elimination. I always have noticed that. Even as a kid, I was like, wait a minute. Why wouldn't he just let him eliminate him? It makes his odds better. Hell, work together, get him out. <laughs> you know, it's, it makes, it just makes so much sense to do it that way. But, you know, you know. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense, but fans suspend their disbelief. However, during the Chisholm 23 Royal Rumble, commentator Corey Graves finally snapped. I'm gonna vent for a second. What we just saw happens in every Rumble match and it drives me up a wall. If somebody's in the process of getting eliminated, why would you go and try to eliminate the person who's trying to eliminate the other person? Yeah. Well, because you it's stupid. Well, you're <laughs> Your record, right? Or no, it's about WrestleMania. After turning face in 2003 and becoming a good guy, fans have been demanding that John Cena turn heel and become a villain again. Well, the night after WrestleMania 29, Cena gave the people what they wanted, literally. No, I, I got it, I got it. A I'm heel, a turn. heel turn. That's the closest we ever got to seeing John Cena turn heel again. Yeah. The Undertaker that was it. wasn't one to break the fourth wall, given his character, mm -hmm. but he did do it once. During a backstage interview, the dead man said this. Well, listen to this, Rock. I want you to get your TV writers that write all your comedy stick for you and get them to write you a eulogy. Undertaker <laughs> was not lying. The Rock, like all WWE wrestlers, had writers come up with the stuff he said on the mic. Here's a little WWE <laughs> secret. Whenever they need people- It's very rare to see you know, The Undertaker kind of break the fourth wall. He was always a stoic, serious character, even when he had the American badass gimmick. He took, you know, he was serious. It was hard to, you know, kind of break his character, like try to get him to crack. It was very hard to do that. So 
um for him to even say that that's that's pretty cool man to play security guards medical staff adam rose's rosebuds or yeah. stuff like that wwe usually gets local wrestlers who haven't been on tv to play those parts you'll even sometimes see the same person playing completely different roles uh -huh. on raw in 2014 dean ambrose got confronted by a group of security guards and made this comment I don't know though. Are you guys real security? Because I could have sworn you were rosebuds last week. The contract signing is one of the most iconic WWE moments. This helps add drama and tension to any match, which is why we've seen it so many times. Of course, since it is wrestling, it's tradition that the two wrestlers end their contract signing by yep. fighting. In 2011, John Cena and CM Punk were doing a contract signing for their match at SummerSlam, and the best in the world made this comment. I mean, when's the last time we had one of these contract signings that didn't end in some sort of horrible physical calamity? We yep. flip the table over and we can all start beating each other up. I'm happy to say the table did eventually get flipped over. <laughs> Years later, we got another That was a great segment too, man. Contract signing. This time between Seth Rollins, Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose. All of a sudden, Ambrose got up and started moving the table and said this. We all know how this is going to end anyway. I call dibs on the table. <laughs> that was funny. He was like, we know how this is going to end. I call dibs on the table. <laughs> Ross started with Ric Flair, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels taking on all five members of the Spirit Squad. Despite the disadvantage, the game, HBK, and the Nature Boy were able to defeat the group of male cheerleaders. Afterward, Triple H and Michaels yep. threw the Spirit Squad into a box that was being sent to OVW w. in Louisville, Kentucky. O I remember that, bro. They shit these niggas out. Get them out of here. OVW stood for Ohio Valley Wrestling <laughs> and was WWE's development system at that time. Uh -huh. In real life, all the Spirit Squad members were going back to OVW for more training. So seeing Triple H and HBK do this was very meta. Okay, yeah. this fourth wall break comes from TNA or Impact Wrestling, but it's too funny not to include. So for a little while, whenever they showed a backstage segment on Impact, it was always filmed like the cameraman was hiding. Yeah. That explained why wrestlers would talk openly because they didn't think anyone was there. Well, except for one incident. It's two of us against one of you. You know what? The only witnesses is, it's the cameraman. And I know I can kick his ass. Wait. You talking about me? <laughs> that is funny, bro. Hope she's not talking about me, bitch. How can she see me? <laughs> On SmackDown, That's Dean Ambrose funny. was sitting in the ring when Kevin Owens interrupted. KO tried to pull a fast one on Dean, but in the lead up to their match at No Mercy, oh, John damn. Cena and Roman I didn't do that, y'all. They probably had to cut it out, maybe copyright reasons. You know, sometimes WWE. They're, you know, they can be strict on it, so they cut it out. So I'm guessing that's what it was. Roman Reigns King. It's called a promo. Kid. Shut your mouth, you Hey, they cut that too. You're gonna have to learn how to do it. So go ahead. See you, fourth wall. Just like other people on Classic TV, segment. WWE wrestlers will sometimes write notes on their wrists so they remember what to say. Mm. When The Rock returned to WWE yep. in 2012, he spent a lot of time talking in the ring, usually about his WrestleMania opponent, John Cena. During one episode of Raw, the camera caught notes written on the Great One's arm. Uh -huh. John Cena later came out to confront The Rock. Cena said some pretty standard things about his opponent, but then he added this. I don't need words like respect and loyalty to trend worldwide, just like I don't need my notes for my promo on my wrist. Some people oh. say that the And this was, yeah, he was, <laughs> The Rock was legit pissed, bro. Cause he, he crossed that line. That was a uh, like, okay. That wasn't part of the script. You you really went behind my back on that one. Because he had to. And it's crazy because people didn't really realize it until it really got shown that that's what it was. And that's what kind of helped him, in a sense, kind of get a little bit of an upper hand against The Rock. Because it's The Rock and Johnson. And we know. Fans know. If you're a fan of wrestling, a lot of people are a fan of The Rock. So The Rock is automatically going to be a fan favorite going into any situation with a lot of people outside of a notable few like Stone Cold. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, he would have a, a little back and forth there because of their rivalry or whatnot. So when John Cena is stepping up to this huge task of trying to, you know, hang with The Rock or even outperform him on a promo and he's able to get that little bit of little bit of dirt on him. He has to use it. I'm sure The Rock didn't like it, but that's the only way to kind of save himself from pretty much being overshadowed this whole little saga they was having. So I understand why he did it. I understand why The Rock was mad. 
but it made for great television. The Rock writing notes on his wrist was fake, and it was just to give John Cena something to roast The Rock with. However, that does not explain why. And you know he could he could say that he can say that, but uh, I think we've seen the documentary where, and I don't know how true it is, but John did say after that, like when they were talking at the end of that segment, they were talking. The Rock was talking mad, mad shit, bro. He was like, he was really upset. Like, that wasn't a joke. He was really pissed about that shit, so. Stephanie McMahon did the same thing. Find out what I'm talking about by hitting the video on screen. Yeah, man. So, obviously, this is one of those type of vids, man. I, I love seeing these type of videos going back and seeing uh, wrestlers <laughs> breaking the full fall. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, man, it's quite hilarious for the most part. Comment down below, let me know what's your favorite fourth wall break from a wrestler. It doesn't even have to be from this video. If you can remember a time where a wrestler broke the fourth wall and it was just hilarious to you, comment down below, let me know. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on channel Road to 150K. And I'm still the speedy YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.